A huge storm is about to impact the United States, bringing all hazards of severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. Additionally, a major flooding threat will take place in the Great Plains and the Southeast over the next few days. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we actually have had some big storms over the last 24 hours. We had a large-scale severe weather event take place from areas like Texas, all the way back up into Minnesota and this storm system was pretty big and it's going to continue to bring some isolated severe weather this morning but we should have a slightly more robust threat of severe weather this afternoon stretching anywhere from the Great Lakes all the way back into Texas where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table and unfortunately this is not our only storm system that we are talking about over the next seven to ten days as we are expecting multiple shortwave troughs to move over the Rocky Mountains which will bring an elongated stretch of severe weather across the United States. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days and it'll begin with today which is Tuesday we have a large slight risk of severe weather in place that goes from Des Moines Iowa back into most of central and north Texas in and around the Dallas Fort Worth area Oklahoma City all the way back through Joplin and Springfield marginal threat goes from the Great Lakes back into Texas all hazards of severe weather are going to be on the table today including the threat of scattered damaging winds as we are pretty much expecting widespread storm activity today though not all storms are going to produce severe weather I would at least anticipate scattered severe weather this afternoon and evening. Large hail is also a concern mainly for those in Kansas, Oklahoma and Texas. Wouldn't rule out a storm producing hail as large as the size of tennis balls this afternoon into the early evening. There's also a threat for a few tornadoes. I think we could see tornadoes basically anywhere from southern Wisconsin all the way back over to north Texas and I really do think the Storm Prediction Center will probably add a 5% tornado risk at some point to include parts of north Texas and Oklahoma where there is a conditional chance of seeing a discrete great supercell or two out in front of our line of thunderstorms. If that's able to happen, we actually could see an isolated strong tornado as well today. So definitely don't rule that out today, especially if you're in the Southern Plains, but anywhere in the green, you could see an isolated tornado or two. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware, have multiple ways to receive warnings. And if today does end up being a lot more concerning, we'll likely be live on this channel. So make sure you are subscribed down below. As we go into Wednesday, the threat of severe weather will shift a little bit further to the east. And then we have another storm system that's going to be coming out of the Southwest. So there will be a low pressure system right over the four corner states that will bring one of probably multiple days of severe weather, which will begin in the high plains as a low risk. It'll increase as we go into Thursday across parts of the southern and central plains and then back over in the Ohio Valley. This can be the remnants of the storm system that we're talking about today. I'm not expecting much in terms of a tornado threat, but damaging winds and isolated large hail will be a possibility. Now let's talk more about the timing for severe weather today, beginning with the Midwest, which is what it looks like right about now. We got scattered showers and thunderstorms out there really not much in the way of severe weather if anything's happening it's isolated damaging winds and hail just after lunchtime is when the severe weather threat is going to kick it up a notch we're going to be watching for multiple clusters of thunderstorms that'll be ongoing right around and just after lunchtime with the main concern with these storms being damaging winds and isolated large hail up to the size of golf balls or so but there will be an isolated chance for a tornado if any of these clusters can organize and turn into a Boeing segment we had something like that yesterday back over in the central and southern plains which actually ended up bringing a lot of damaging winds but didn't bring much of a tornado risk but since we have a lot more moisture today compared to yesterday we should at least see an isolated tornado or two here in parts of the midwest and the central plains so by three to four o'clock these storms are going to continue to move across these areas back over in western illinois that may be one where one of the clusters is ongoing we'll likely have a much larger cluster extending from northern missouri into parts of oklahoma by around five to six o'clock these storms continue to push east i think our greatest tornado threat will be during the mid to late afternoon especially especially back over here in northeast Missouri and western Illinois. And then by the early evening hours, these storms will be weakening as they approach areas like Chicago and also back over towards the Great Lakes, which is good news if you live in those areas. And then as we go into Wednesday, a few isolated severe storms will be possible back over in parts of Michigan, Indiana, and as well as Ohio. I'm not expecting much more than isolated hail and wind. Very, very, very low tornado risk back over in Michigan. In the Central Plains, plenty of showers and storms out there this morning. As those clear out throughout the late morning, we should start to see some severe storms really ramp up around lunchtime. We'll have a couple clusters ongoing here in parts of Kansas and also extreme northern Oklahoma. And then as we go into the early to mid-afternoon hours, these storms are going to start to move further to the east across parts of Kansas City, and then more storms will fire right down to the southwest across parts of northern Oklahoma. Keep in mind that we're not just talking about a threat of severe weather here. We're also going to be watching for a flash flooding risk. These storms are going to be overlapping in this general vicinity for several hours today. This could lead to major flooding concerns. 
So definitely turn around, don't drown on the roadways. Low lying areas could definitely be affected throughout the afternoon and evening hours. By around four to five o'clock, the storms will continue. Again, we got multiple segments of storms ongoing. A lot of them, again, will be mostly wind and hail, but there is a little bit higher of a tornado risk further down here to the south, especially if we get some discrete supercells out in front of our line, which the HRRR model is hinting at here on this run around five, six, seven o'clock. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on. Additionally, if we get any sort of discrete cells out in front of our line, I also would not rule out very large hail out of a storm or two. That means that we could see tennis ball, maybe even apple sized hail out of a storm or two here this afternoon and evening. And if that ends up happening, we'll probably be live on this channel. So make sure you are subscribed down below. By seven to eight o'clock, the storms continue to push across much of eastern, central, and southern Oklahoma. They'll be through Oklahoma City by around eight, nine o'clock tonight. And then they'll be weakening as we go into the overnight hours for Arkansas and Missouri. But one area that's not going to really see weakening storms overnight is Texas and southern Oklahoma, because we're going to have a bunch of storms out there during the late afternoon and evening hours. And these storms will approach the Dallas Fort Worth area sometime around midnight tonight with all hazards of severe weather on the table. But I think wind will be the biggest concern out of these storms. Low tornado risk by about one to two in the morning. A lot of those storms are going to be rumbling right into the Dallas Fort Worth area, going in the direction of Waco and Austin into the very early morning hours on Wednesday. And then those should fall apart as we go past sunrise on Wednesday. And then beyond Wednesday, our threat of severe weather will likely continue at least into Thursday and Friday. We are expecting a very active weather pattern, as we've already talked about multiple times here over the last few days. But on Thursday, we are expecting at least a few supercells to fire up here across parts of West Texas, in addition to up closer to the Oklahoma Panhandle, where all hazards of severe weather would be on the table on Thursday. It does look like there's a good chance of a live stream right now on Thursday. And then on Friday, we may end up seeing some sort of big cluster of thunderstorms develop here across parts of the central and southern plains near our low pressure system, which could bring all hazards of severe weather on the table. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. But again, very active weather patterns ahead here for the next couple of weeks. We should have a chance of severe weather literally every day, at least in some part of the country through at least mid-June. And one of the biggest reasons why our weather pattern is just going to be so active for the next week or two is not because of the intensity of our jet stream, but it's because of the fact that our troughing is currently occurring back over in the Rockies, which is going to help to basically initiate a bunch of these shortwave troughs that'll move over the four corner states and the Rocky Mountains, which will lead to the threat of some significant severe weather. On the other hand, we are expecting at least some ridging to take place here along the East Coast. It will not be enough to you know, mitigate basically all the severe weather that we're going to be seeing, but it will be enough to at least prevent a lot of significant severe weather events, I think, for most of the next two weeks. I don't really think there's going to be a whole lot here back over in the Ohio Valley, Northeast, or anywhere really along the East Coast when it comes to significant severe weather. We may have one or two events, but it does not look like it's going to be repetitive like what we saw back in April and May. As we go into next week, this weather pattern will likely continue to stay pretty active. The GFS model is still indicating that we're going to see multiple shortwave troughs. We might even see an isolated tropical storm form here over the next week or two, perhaps off the coast of the Carolinas, maybe even in the Gulf or Caribbean, and we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Now let's put this into more simplistic terms with the future radar over the next few days. Beginning with Thursday, we'll have a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms across the country. Our greatest focus of severe weather will be across the central and southern plains. We'll break that down more in detail in our next video. As we go into Friday, those showers and thunderstorms will move further to the east. I think there will at least be some isolated severe weather left over in the Ohio Valley on Friday. Also, more severe weather is expected in the central and southern plains. All hazards of severe weather would be on the table just down to the south here of our surface low that's in the northern plains. On Saturday, we'll have even more severe weather. I think it's going to be relatively isolated for those in the Dixie Alley and also the southeast. But if you're back over in the high plains, more severe weather is in store just off to the west here of our high pressure system. And then as we go into late Sunday and Monday, I think we're at least going to get somewhat of a break from significant severe weather, maybe for a day or two. But yeah, notice how many storm days we're going to have. We're going to have more storms over in the high plains on Monday. Next Tuesday and Wednesday, it looks to be pretty active. So really, there's not much that is going to be stopping this very active weather pattern here across the country with all the troughing that we have back over in along the West Coast and across the Rockies. Now, on top of all this, we are expecting a lot of rain over the next seven days, which could lead to major flooding, especially if you are in the central plains near the Ozarks back into Oklahoma City. A lot of this is going to fall today, but we are expecting somewhere between four to eight inches of rain just over the next seven days. Isolated locations could be as high as 10 to 12 inches. If you're anywhere in the red, two to three inches of rains in the forecast, and then anywhere in the purple or even blue, we're at least expecting a half of an inch of rain. So a lot of rains ahead, especially east of the Rockies. As I've mentioned multiple times, troughing is really going to be dominant here. So we will be talking about multiple storm systems throughout the first couple of weeks of June. We also have flood watches that are in effect anywhere from North Texas back into most of Missouri. That is mostly for what's going to
going to be happening today into early tomorrow, so be ready again for some flash flooding, especially in low-lying areas. And believe it or not, hurricane season has already kicked off. We actually have an area of development, according to the National Hurricane Center, just off the coast of the Carolinas. Has about a 10% chance of forming here over the next five days. It's going to depend on if our low-pressure system just stays offshore, and if it does, we may get a brief tropical storm, or maybe even a subtropical storm here just off the coast. The biggest concern, if this does form or even doesn't form, will be the threat of coastal flooding, mainly in South and North Carolina. So just an early heads up, we may get our first name storm here of the season in the Atlantic Ocean, but if not, this is at least our first area of development here to kick off hurricane season in the Atlantic Ocean. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We might go live later today for severe weather coverage. If not, it looks pretty likely that Thursday and or Friday may be stream day. So subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. And if we don't have a live stream today, we'll see you in another video tomorrow.